So our next speaker is going to be um, Adam. He's part of the uh, Programming and Environment Models Group. Um, and we'll be talking about uh, containers and different container technologies that we have here at NERSC. So great. I'll let you take it away. Is my screen coming through and voice coming through? We can hear you. Yep. And now you're full screen. Oh, fantastic. All right. Great. Uh, well, thank you. Uh, I appreciate this opportunity to, to speak with you. I apologize. I couldn't be there in person. Um, my name is Adam Lavely. I'm a part of the Programming Environments and Modeling Group here at uh, NERSC. And I'm going to be speaking with you about containers for HPC that we have available to us uh, here at NERSC. So really briefly, I, I hope that most of you already know this, but I'm, I'm going to kind of start from the beginning. What is a container? I think that an answer, right, that the answer that I'm kind of putting forth here is that this is some sort of encapsulated software environment that runs using a separate Linux kernel. And, you know, these are some semi-fancy words, but, um, but let's jump into what this actually means. So the goal here, the goal with any container is that you, the user, get to choose exactly what you want to put together, whether this is software, whether this is data, and put this together in a way that you think is important for whatever reasons you have, right? Reproducibility, portability, these are all very important. Uh, even just being able to share easily, that this is something that, that is very useful. Uh, this package is gonna run using some sort of container runtime, and we'll talk a little bit more about some of those here, um, but there's a lot of different runtimes, and these can be used on a lot of different systems. Um, We'll talk about the specific container runtimes that are that we have available on Perlmutter, um, but I'm also going to be kind of presenting this in a slightly agnostic uh, fashion here at the beginning. So hopefully, wherever you're doing your compute, you're able to get up and going easily. Uh, and then the, the last part of my answer is using a separate Linux kernel. Uh, and that's kind of an important distinction between what a container is and what a virtual machine is. And really with a container, we're gonna use the host machine's Linux kernel. And the reason that we're doing this is completely about efficiency. Uh, because we can take advantage of the, the host machine's Linux kernel, we can have a bunch of containers running and um, you know that they're not gonna be running their own kernels themselves. Uh, so hopefully this is something that, that's useful for a broader HPC center. Uh, and hopefully this also makes it easier for you as an individual to run because you'll be able to take advantage of what's going on at, um, at all the different places you're, uh, you're actually doing computation. So why should we use containers? Um, I, I, I was originally thinking about trying to do some sort of Star Wars, you know, all the text flows by, uh, but I ran out of time. So I, I threw a whole bunch of reasons up here uh, these are all different reasons that I've talked about with people when we've talked about their individual needs. But in general, we want some sort of functionality that you think is important that's both portable and performant. Um, so you can look through these reasons, hopefully that there are some things that resonate with you, um, but really the, the portability and uh, performance are, are kind of the, the big things. Um, it's also very useful for, uh, for development. Uh, you can easily update different libraries, different library versions, compile using different methods and, and compare the, the differences easily. But long story short, there's a lot of reasons. Uh, if you'd like to talk about your specific thing in the office hour, I'd be more than happy to jump in with you. So for the rest of the talk, uh, I'm gonna first give kind of a general overview of the, the container workflow with all the terminology. I'm gonna be doing this in a very agnostic way. So, you know, whether it's Docker or Podman HPC, it's really not gonna to matter too much. And then we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into running containers on Perlmutter. Uh, we have two different container engines that, that are available, Shifter and Podman HPC. Uh, we'll jump in primarily with Shifter and then I'll, I'll show you some minor differences with Podman HPC. Um, unfortunately, we don't quite have enough time to do some uh, some experiments here, uh, but I'll, I'll give you a few things to try out and we can do some more of those together uh, if you'd like during the office hours. All right, so uh, our container lifetime goes from creating this container file that, that's gonna kind of dictate everything that happens to building it to actually running it. 
So the, the thing that we start with is a container file. And this is, uh, well, I say human readable, but uh, it's human readable if you know what container files are supposed to look like, right? It might not make sense to those that are uninitiated, but it's going to specify that the operating system that you're using is gonna install any third-party libraries. Um, and then you'll also uh, compile whatever application that you have or put it there from someplace else. You'll feed this container file into an image builder. And so that, that's a program that will build an image from this container file. And the image is really, it's the, the, the whole thing that's together. Um, the image is gonna be an uh, a binary file that you can't just open up and look at, but you'll have to open it up as a container to, to go in and examine. Um, but the image builder is typically a, a program that's a part of the, a larger container engine ecosystem. So a, a few notes here. Um, throughout this entire talk, I'm likely going to be talking about container files, but I might say Docker file. And the reason is that Docker is really it was the, the first widely used container solution. And so a lot of the, the nomenclature about the entire container process is very Docker centric. Um, and so even though we aren't gonna be using Docker, uh, it's gonna be out there, it's kind of infiltrated in. Um, so I apologize if I, if I say Docker file instead of container file, but please just know that almost all of these things when you're poking around online, um, you know, if you see Docker file, if you see, you know, Docker process, Things like this, you know, most of these are going to be fairly uh, applicable to, to other container engines as well. And then the other thing to note, so that these container files are actually relatively small text files. Um, when they get built by some sort of image builder, they'll be a little bit larger. You know, we're talking usually uh, maybe 100 megabytes in size for typical images. You know, a lot of them can get much, much larger as they get more complicated but you'll typically store your image in sort of some sort of image registry or image repository. Um, and these can be both public or private. You know, some of them are, are um, you have to pay to get uh, private access to it. Uh, NERSC runs its own registry, so I'd encourage you to check that out. I think a little bit later here, I have a link to some of the documentation about that. Um, but the, this image registry is really handy because it allows you to easily share your images, right? You don't have to, copy it on some sort of disk or um, SCP it to, to a friend. Uh, it, it's fairly easy for you to put something on a repository um, and then or on a registry and then have somebody else grab it from that location. And almost all registries uh, have some sort of image builder. So you'll upload a container file and it will give you an image. And this is really nice if you have uh, one of the um, container engines that uh, doesn't allow you to build on the system that you're on, it, similar to a shifter on our NERSC systems here. Okay, so now that you have some sort of image, and right, that this can either be built by yourself, uh, this can be something that a friend shares with you, or this can be something that you grab from one, one of the registries, you're gonna use some sort of container runtime software. And, and that's the actual container that's, or the, the software that's used to launch this container. Um, and so we talk a lot about Docker because that's kind of been there, done that sort of thing. Um, but Shifter and Podman HPC are the, the well, Podman are the, the two runtimes that we have on Perlmutter itself. Um, so there's some differences between these. Um, there's quite a few of them out there. Uh, we'll be focusing primarily on the, the two that are, are here on Perlmutter today though. And then the container is actually the image that's running. Uh, so we talk about containers and you know, throughout this entire process, but really the, the container is the image that, that's actually going. Um, so the application, hopefully you've built it so that there are nice instructions for you to do whatever you want with it. Um, we're doing very simple things here today, but hopefully you're able to do whatever science you're trying to do uh, fairly easily. And the, the container, uh, it'll likely have some access to data on the, the system that you're on, as well as some sort of file system that, that pops up when it's being used. All right, so I've, I've talked a little bit about um, container builders, container runtimes, and the broader term for this is container engines. So if you see this online, uh, you know, a lot of the, the different tutorials that, that you'll go through, we'll talk about container engines. And really the container engine is just 
all of this together, right? The container runtime, as well as the ability to, to build the images. Um, and different container engines have different capabilities. Um, some of these you have to be root in order to create a container, some of these you don't. Uh, and those are differences that will become apparent here as we start to talk about what's on Perlmutter itself. Uh, and then I, I also, I think that I mentioned this a little bit earlier, I jumped the gun, but uh, the container doesn't have to be fully self-contained, right? So we can actually mount uh, different parts of the, the file system of whatever system you're on so that we can allow data that's stored there to be used. And we can also uh, try to get access to the, you know, whatever optimized software is there. Uh, so for example, on Perlmutter, um, we have the, the Cray MPI libraries that, that do the, the communication for us that are uh, very fast. And so it's good for us to be able to access that um, network capability from within our container. So uh, I kind of went very quickly, very briefly through what containers are. I'd like to just talk about a few things that are what I would call container adjacent. Uh, these are things that you'll probably hear talked about when people are talking about containers. And I, I want to make sure that we're on the same page with these before we move forward. Uh, so we have the Open Container Initiative. So that's OCI. And this is a, a standards body that's pushing for container standardization across all container engines. Um, this is something that, that I particularly love. Uh, I'm a standards guy myself. I, I appreciate uniformity, uh, but it also makes it far easier because you know, you'll watch this container talk. I'm sure that eventually you'll try to find some sort of tutorial that's kind of specialized in what you're doing. And if the different container engines have very similar CLI, uh, it'll be much easier for you to do what you need to do and, and switch between different compute centers that have different container engines. I kind of made a big point at the beginning about containers uh, using the uh, host Linux kernel. You also have something called virtual machines or VMs, and these are things that run, but they use their own kernel. Um, and so this is another way of running uh, other applications on a host machine. Um, this is a little bit more isolated than containers are, and there's a little bit more overhead associated with this, but there are some good reasons to be doing this, especially if you're doing anything that does rely on updates or changes to the, the host kernel. Uh, when we talk about containers, you'll almost always hear people talk about Kubernetes. Uh, Kubernetes is really a, a large standard for container orchestration that does everything from setting up containers to scaling them up to manage them. Um, there's a lot of different implementations and they're governed by the, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. So between the CNCF and the OCI, you know, these are our groups that are very useful, very helpful to make sure that, uh, that uh, the standardization or that the containers are becoming standardized in a way such that it's easy for a user to switch between different container engines and different compute centers. And then kind of on the, the opposite side, so Kubernetes is just for containers. Slurm is our job scheduler. So it's commonly used on HPC systems and Slurm is used to allocate resources for some job that, that you, a NERSC user submit, which may or may not contain a container. So Kubernetes is very container specific. Slurm is a little bit more uh, broad based and agnostic. All right, so let's jump into running containers at NERSC. And so the, the first thing that, that I kind of want to talk about is, uh, you know, when we look at containers for HPC, the HPC applications are a little bit different than some of the different things that standard people or the standard containers are used for. So we're often very sensitive to file system performance. And a lot of times we're very communication intensive, right? Our MPIs are doing a, a lot of data transfers. Our MPI calls are doing a lot of data transfers. Um, we also really appreciate the opportunity to, do system, to use system tuned libraries. Um, so the Perlmutter has uh, many libraries that the, the Cray program environment has provided for us that, that work incredibly well. It's good for you to use those rather than just use some uh, out of the box standard library if you can. Um, it's generally easier to get good performance that way. Uh, also on HPC systems, these are our large shared systems. And so because there's a lot of users there, uh, they're untrusted be between the, the different users. 
Um, and so that's very different from, say, a Kubernetes cluster where I might be the only person on that or everything is running through some workflow. And so everything has been verified by you know, some sysadmin with a, a pay grade much above mine. Uh, and so everything can be trusted. And then also the ability to use batch schedulers is a little bit unique to, to HPC as far as the containers go. And so the nurse container engines that we have are really kind of fine tuned to do these things well. Um, and one of the things that I'm that I try to do through the rest of the talk, I don't think that I caught quite everything, but every time that we're doing something that's a little bit different than normal, um, as far as containers go, I'm going to put this little HPC mark up there, right? Almost like a little trademark, um, so that you can see, hey, this is something that you know, if I'm going through a say standard Docker tutorial, that might not necessarily be the exact same. All right, so we have two different container engines here at NERSC. Uh, Shifter and Podman HPC. So Shifter has been around for a little while. This is actually something that NERSC built uh, eight, nine years ago, something like that now. And it was really built to address the HPC needs that we were seeing at the time. Uh, I think that it's incredibly popular here at NERSC. We have a lot of users that have been using it very successfully for quite a while, but it really didn't become widely adopted elsewhere. Um, and additionally, you, you have to build the images someplace else. Um, it's fairly easy to do that, but it's an additional step that you have to be off of Perlmutter for. Uh, so what he mentioned, you know, being able to take advantage of the, the broader community and his opening remarks. And that's one of the reasons why we've uh, now adopted Podman. Um, so Podman is a community supported container engine. It actually comes out of Red Hat. And so we're fairly confident that both it's gonna be well-maintained as well as uh, have fairly wide adoption. Podman HPC is actually a, a wrapper that NERSC has built to go around Podman in order to make doing HPC on our systems as easy as possible. Um, and so really, you know, NERSC is still very much involved with the development and it, it's very much focused at, on getting performance on our systems, but the, the base, the underlying layer is uh, supported by a much broader community. And one of the nice things about Podman HPC is that you're able to build images, like you as a regular user, you don't need any sort of root access to do this. You don't need to use some sort of outside registry. Uh, and so it's, it's a little bit easier to get in and going uh, using Podman HPC. All right, so now I'm, I'm gonna kind of walk through uh, the, the steps in order to, uh, to actually run on Perlmutter. Uh, and I apologize between the, the amount of time and the lack of my uh, belief in myself to not fat finger these things. I'm just going to walk through the examples, but I would encourage you to, to try these. What I'm trying to do on each of the, the slides, and I think that I caught everything. So the, um, the lines that start with a dollar sign are lines that you will enter. And then uh, if it's in that same font, but without the dollar sign, those are what you're going to see after you put this in. And I, I've tried to put some different colors in here. We'll walk through this to, to understand exactly what's happening. Um, and we'll go from, you know, getting your image all the way to, to running in a couple of different ways. First, we'll do this with Shifter, and then we'll move over to Podman HPC to kind of showcase the, the differences between the two, even though they are fairly similar. So our first step is gonna to be to get an image. And uh, in this particular example, we're gonna be getting the image lol cow from Docker. Uh, this is an example that, that I really like to use, not only because I like the lols, but also because there's some differences between when you do it on, the, um, on a login node versus when you submit the job. So the command is shown here, right? Shifter IMG pull docker god love C lol cow latest. So the first portion of that, the portion in purple, is that we're going to pull an image and we're going to put it into the shifter format. And that shifter format is a little bit specialized, right? And you'll see I have that HPC trademark sign there. We're really trying to make sure that we're getting good file system performance. And so this command is, is a little bit more than just grabbing the, um, grabbing the image file from some other place. It also puts it in this nice shifter format. When we grab it, we're gonna specify the repository. We're in any repository, there's gonna be a whole bunch of users likely. And so you're gonna specify which user you're grabbing it from and then also the container name itself. And then finally, you'll have the version number. Um, I tend to use latest for most of my things just because as I'm doing things, I'd rather have the latest and greatest. 
Uh, but if you are interested in making sure that you always keep the same version, it's easy to put an exact version number there and just continue to use that over and over. So when you put this command in on Perlmutter, it'll take a, a, I don't know, maybe 15 or 20 seconds, and then it'll say uh, that the image is ready for you to go. Um, once you have this image on, it's good to, to actually know that it's there, or if you don't remember if you pulled a specific image or not, you can check to see if an image is there. So Shifter IMG uh, gives you the ability to, to look at different images. And so you can say images and ask for all of them. Now, when you do this, if you don't have the, the pipe and the, the grep lol cow, you'll see that there are hundreds, if not thousands of images that are currently available. Uh, and that just goes to show how many people are using Shifter and how many images people are using on Perlmutter. But if you grep uh, so that you can see exactly uh, what you've pulled down, uh, it, it'll show just the, the image that, that you're interested in. Uh, so I, I do suggest making sure that the image came through, um, making sure that the image is the, the version that you want. And uh, in order to do that, you know, grep is gonna be a, a great tool for you. So now we're ready to actually run the container. So we're gonna use, just right on the login node, the command shifter. So that's how we're gonna start our container up. We're gonna choose the image, right? So minus minus image, and then put the image that we've put. And then we're gonna do dash dash entry point, right? So uh, entry point is kind of the, the standard way that when people set up their containers, how it, it uh, begins. So we'll take a look at a container file later, but really, if you're wondering if you're guessing, entry point is a great place to start. Um, if you're building your own container, you don't have to do it exactly this way, but that, that's a, a kind of the, the basics. So when you are to run this, you'll see down below, you have a, a nice little cow, and that cow gives you something that might make you lol, maybe. Depends on what your lols are like. But uh, this will come out. Um, I, so on, on my terminal window, I have a black background and so the green pops out quite a bit. Uh, I apologize it's, if it's a little bit hard to see here. Um, now I, I do wanna point out, um, I, I have this in a little note here. So uh, Shifter, the, the way that this is set up, you don't have the ability to, to build your own images uh, on Perlmutter and you also have to have the, the container executable be run as a regular user um, and, and this, jumping back to kind of our HPC specific needs because we're on an untrusted system that this is why we're doing this. Uh, so I happen to grab a container that I knew would work, but if you grab a random container, it may be that it doesn't work. So if you type this in with a, the name and it just kind of stalls there, the container itself might be set up so that a portion of it needs to be in route to run and Shifter won't allow that to happen. Um, and so that the nurse stocks actually give you a, a uh, a, a couple of step process to, to kind of go through and figure out if that's the case, and then also tells you how to change it if that is the case. All right, so that's doing uh, just shifter on the login node. Um, we can also run shifter jobs using an interactive job. Um, so this will be on the batch system. So we'll first do an S alloc, and the S alloc is to request a job, and then we have to ask for whatever requirements that we have for that request. So in this particular example, we're asking for one node, 60 minutes on the CPU partition and using the interactive node uh, queue. And then we're also gonna say minus minus image equals our image, the, the container image that, that we are interested in. So we're gonna preload this image. And this is something that, that Shifter does um, in conjunction with Slurm in order to get you as good a performance as possible. Uh, so, that's the way that we're going to do that. We're also gonna put that in a batch job as well here in a couple of slides. I'll show you how to do that. Um, so when you do this, SALEC will run its magic. And then once you have resources available, you'll be allowed to type something new in. And here you're gonna do S run shifter and then minus minus entry point. Now I'm gonna go back one slide here and you'll see that previously we had done shifter, the image and then entry point. And now we're just doing shifter and entry point, right? So S run is meaning that we're gonna run on our allocation um, or on our allocated nodes, but we don't have the image because we've already 
uh, preloaded the image using the salloc command. So that's why this is a little bit different. Um, and then, I mean, the, this particular example takes all of, I don't know, four seconds to run. Uh, we asked for 60 minutes, and so you should probably exit your job uh, and, and make sure that you're not taking up additional compute resources. All right, so now moving on to batch shifter jobs. Uh, with batch shifter jo or with batch jobs in general, we're going to create some sort of submission script, and then we'll submit this using sbatch. Uh, so I've given an example submission script here. Uh, for those of you that submit jobs regularly, I don't think that much of this is going to be a surprise that this is very standard stuff as far as uh, typical uh, submission scripts go. Um, I do want to point out just a, a couple of things here. So in blue, we're creating output and error files that are going to be based on the submission script name, that's the percent %x, as well as the job ID, the percent %j. Uh, and this is actually incredibly handy. I'd like to suggest that people do this not just for container type things, but for any jobs that you're running, because it very quickly allows you to understand exactly where the job came from and you know, which uh, version of the, the job that you ran if you're making modifications. Um, we're also going to use that same minus minus image and then the image name, um, but we're going to use that as a part of the sbatch command. And so again, we're preloading this image. Uh, and then we're going to be running this very much the same way before. So I do have the minus n and the, the slurm underscore n nodes. Um, I don't necessarily need this here because I'm only running on a single node, but it, it's good practice to, to make sure that we have that because not all containers will run on just one node. So when you run this, you'll look at the .out file, and that's going to contain the wool cow. Oh, I apologize. I forgot to mention, so I'm going to go back a couple of slides. Um, here, the coloring is going to be bright and spectacular. When we run this on the um, on, on some sort of, uh, rather than on the, the login nodes, but on the, the batch nodes, it's going to write out, but it's just going to be in black and white. So It'll be easy for you to tell if you're running on the head node, uh, running it interactively on a compute node, or running it in the batch node. And when you run it in batch mode, it's going to be written out to the dot out file. All right, so the example that I went through is very simple, kind of funny, but very simple. Um, and so there's a, a couple of shifter options that you need to be aware of. Uh, one is making sure that you have the ability to access any data on Perlmutter that you are trying to access. Uh, and that's using the volume flag. And so you can set it up to point to wherever on Perlmutter and then point to where you want that to be within the container. Um, there are some containers that, that it's good to clear the external environment and ignore what's going on outside before you jump in. So there's a minus minus clear env command. You can also set environment variables uh, if that's something that you need to do. Um, finally, it's typically uh, it's typically um, good to set up kind of a work directory within the container, and so that's fairly easy to do. Now, these are all kind of generic things that uh, you could use anywhere. Uh, Shifter has also added what they call modules and. I want to be very clear that these are not the same modules that you do when you say module avail or module load program and uh, whatever. Uh, these are shifter specific modules and the modules are really there for us to get good performance on the system. Um, and so I, I've listed out some of the modules that are available, right? We're trying to use either the Cray MPI to get the, the fastest communication that we have. We want to have access to the CVMFS file system, or we want access to the, the CUDA um, drivers and tools. Um, so all these are things that uh, are kind of built on top in order to get you the best possible performance. And again, these are modules that you'll add onto Shifter. Um, and the, the link that I have on the NERS docs, every time that it says NERS docs here, it's actually to a specific portion of the documentation that kind of explains what these things are uh, that, that I'm pointing out. So uh, kind of shifting uh, um, from Shifter to Podman HPC now. So Shifter was really built for NERSC in particular. Um, now Podman HPC is OCI compliant, or at least it's moving in that direction. 
Um, and so there's a few differences, right? So Shifter has some of the capabilities loaded by default, and you have to manually load those with Podman HPC. Um, but that being said, a lot of our work on Podman HPC is informed by the way people use Shifter, the way that Shifter kind of developed, and, and we uh, know what people have desired and needed in the past, as well as our experience using Shifter today. Um, and so I don't think that we're you know, throwing out all of our Shifter knowledge and moving in a different direction, but we're definitely uh, being guided by, by what we've learned from Shifter as we're developing Podman HPC. And then the other big difference is that Podman HPC controls access using namespaces. And I'm not gonna go into any of the, the details here, but the two things that we're gonna, that are important for us as, as users, as people that are running this, is that we can build containers on Perlmut Perlmutter using Podman HPC. We don't have to grab these from some other location. And then we can also run containers that have portions that run as root. Um, this is gonna be contained within your user namespace and so you can be root within there and there's no issues with that. And so Podman HPC, uh, you'll likely be able to grab more containers that are out there and, and run them without making modifications than uh, Shifter. So, uh, Really, I have just a few more slides here that are gonna be primarily about the differences between Shifter, what I've already presented with Shifter and Podman HPC. So that the first difference is really being able to create the container itself. Um, so the first thing that we're gonna do is create our container file. And so here I have a two line container file. So from docker.io slash library slash Ubuntu slash or um, colon latest. So what this is saying that we're gonna start with some sort of base operating system. I'm using the latest version of Ubuntu in this particular example. And then we have the entry point. So the entry point here, uh, when I type entry or type oop, entry point, like I do here, now it's just gonna echo no lulls here. Um, so this is gonna automatically run when you start the container with the minus minus entry point. Uh, so, this is a very simple container file. They can get far more complicated. Our documentation has some pointers to how this is done. Um, because Podman is OCI compliant, uh, it's very easy to, to search and find how to write Docker files um, to be able to do wgets and compiles and all these things. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna start with this as the base, but uh, again, this is just an entry point in. Um, you'll be able to, to easily find more information from here on. So then once we have this container file, we'll actually create the container. And so we'll do that using the podmin hpc build command. And we're gonna tag the name or tag the container with a name as well as a version number. And again, we can call any container by a version number. And if you call latest, it'll just be the, the highest version number. Um, and then you'll also notice that there's a period here, right? The period is in orange. So we're gonna build the container using a file called container file that is in the directory that you're currently in. So we do have the ability to do a minus F, excuse me, minus F and point to a particular container file that's named anything that you want. Um, but you know, standard, this is kind of the, what's done um, generally. And so I, I wanted to point this out and then you can build beyond that later. So Podman HPC also has the ability to view your containers. Um, it turns out that uh, Shifter, you view all the containers that are there, Podman HPC, uh, you'll just view a, a few of the images that are there. One of the things you'll notice is that you'll have both the container that you have built as well as anything that it's based on. So because I grabbed the Ubuntu latest, it's also going to show up for me. And then here with Podman HPC, one of the things that we'll need to do is migrate this to scratch so that we get better performance. Uh, and so we'll use the Podman HPC migrate command to be able to, to move this over to scratch. And one of the things that I do wanna point out is that this is a one-time process, right? This is not a linking. And so if you update your container, if you make changes, you'll have to re-migrate this. And then running is very much the same way. We'll do podman hpc run minus minus rm no lulls. Um, so we have the command. Uh, we're gonna use the minus minus rm to clean up the used container when we're done. Uh, otherwise, you just end up with a whole bunch of extra containers around, and then we'll have the, the same container name and version number that we had before. Um, again, we can submit this interactively on the batch nodes uh, in very much the same way, And uh, but I do want to point out that we're not going to 
uh, specify the image name here in the, the salloc command. You'll do that in the, the podman hpc run uh, <laughs> command. Okay, so I have just a, a couple of minutes left. Uh, just a few more things to point out. You'll add flags to podman hpc very similarly to how you add them to shifter. But now, instead of using modules, uh, the, rather than have modules for shifter, you're going to just add flags. And so the, the flags that you'll probably be using are here. Um, there's a lot of information about this in the nurse docs, as well as uh, some more detailed examples to, to get a little bit more complicated. But I did want to introduce this idea and be able to point you in the, the right direction. So finally, um, I've given you hopefully enough information to get started and not feel completely lost. Um, hopefully. Uh, but there's a lot of, of great examples and documentation on the NURSE website for both Shifter and HPC. I really didn't talk very much about registries outside of just how to grab a, a few quick things for them. So NURSC, at NURSC, we do have a registry that anybody with a NURSC account has access to. Uh, our documentation page for that is actually pretty good. Uh, I don't think that we have a whole lot of users taking advantage of that yet, but I think that'll, that will become more and more important um, and then there's a couple of other places that are uh, more easily accessible to the outside world, um, either for public or if you want to pay to, to have some private uh, private registries for your images. And then we also gave a fairly detailed shifter training about a year and a half ago that goes into a little bit more depth on a, a few of the examples that I glossed over a little bit here. Uh, and then the other two things I would encourage everybody to, to use are our help desk. Um, NERSC has fantastic consultants, and so I would strongly encourage you to, if you do get stuck, to, to reach out. Uh, you'll likely be able, getting some excellent help very quickly. And then we also have the ability to do these 30-minute um, user appointments. So you get put in a, a virtual room with somebody like me, uh, and we'll work through your issue itself. So these are some, hopefully, some uh, ways to get you up and running as quickly as possible. And with that, I'd like to say thank you. And I apologize for taking so much of the time and not being able to answer many questions. Yeah. All right, great. Thank you, Adam. Yeah, there's some questions in the doc. Um, if you wanna just answer those in the doc. Uh, if there's will, any questions um, at the moment that anyone has. Um, but yeah, if not, then uh, let's thank our speaker. And